I'm Josie Hannes, and I would like to thank everyone to our 2014 Chamber Fiesta celebration. Thank you to Top of the Rock for the amazing hors d'oeuvres. They were great. Please feel free to get yourself a drink throughout the night. We really need to give a big round of our applause to the drink sponsors, the Hideaway Bar. They're serving margaritas. They're delicious. And the Burning Oak Restaurant and Bar. They're serving watermelon mojitas. Feel free to, so feel free to get yourself a drink at, at any time. Okay, did everybody get a little ducky? If you didn't get a little ducky, raise your hand. Okay, I see some hands. Okay, so the point of the ducks, you need to keep them because throughout the evening we're going to call for prizes. There's numbers on the bottom. And if you have it, you can check your little ducks over here at the two bars because you could have won a prize. We'd like to thank Girl Scout Troop 9255 for helping greet everyone tonight. If you'd like to donate, Katrina Shakini and Kristen Gordy are raising money for their international trip to Europe next summer. You can donate at their display table right after. Dinner is going to be served by High Bee tonight. It's going to be delicious steak, chicken, and shrimp fajitas with your choice of corn or flour tortillas. The sides are lime cilantro rice and whole black beans. Dessert will be yummy fried ice cream. So you all can enjoy your meal. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed your meal. I know you're still eating dessert, but we're gonna get things going just to keep the night going. Tonight we have a special MC, and we know he always does a great job. He has been a chamber ambassador. He, has been cha he was chamber president in 2002. And I'm sure he will add something fun for the night. He always puts his heart into everything that he does. So let's give a warm welcome to our chamber amigo, Diego Pedrick, AKA Jim Pedrick. My sister's a Spanish teacher, so I asked her to help me with my phrases a little bit. Isn't she great? But I looked one up on Google. Estas listo para la fiesta! Are you ready to party? Okay. You know, when I got dressed this morning, I wasn't sure what color of a serape they would have for me, so I hope my tie looks all right. It's great to be here in the Fairfield Arts and Convention Center for the 2013 Chamber of Commerce Banquet. It seems like just yesterday that I was finishing up my year as president, and in my farewell speech, I was urging people to get out and vote for the local option sales tax to support the construction of this building. And I thank everybody that did all the hard work to make it possible. Another thing that I uh, remember from that chamber banquet, well actually the, the chamber banquet before I came pre became president, I think, I was talking about my father and my grandfather and their work in, in Chamber of Commerce in two different states actually. Well now, 11 years later, I'm proud to say that uh, Gwen and my son Stephen is on the Fairfield Chamber Board, so that's the next generation of Chamber of Commerce volunteers. You know, it's something that's changed from when we used to do annual banquets. Have you noticed that everything is for sale? There's sponsors for everything. Have you looked in the bathroom? There's some openings in there. But I'm going to make a deal. There's one sponsorship that they missed. And so I'm going to negotiate a trade out right now with Lindsay for my usual fee for a sponsorship, okay? So Josie, from now on, 
uh, I want to be referred to as Jim Pedrick, the Jim Pedrick MC. Okay? That's, that's my sponsorship there. You missed that one. Well, I tell you, it's been a rough month for people in the Master of Ceremony business. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon came on as the new host of The Tonight Show, and that reminded me that I didn't get that call. And then uh, Letterman announces the retirement, and I thought, okay, this is my next chance. No, no call again. Are there any Jimmy Fallon fans out here? Do you happen to know if he was about to retire? Okay. All right, now I'm going to... Michael, Michael Hall, Halley remembers when I used to be funny. <laughs> so please uh, welcome our incoming uh, Fairfield Chamber of Commerce President. Thanks, Jim. One year, years ago, when this uh, event was held at the Best Western, it tended to run on for hours, and, and Jim said something near the end of the event. He said, I just got news. Uh, it's a windowless room. He said, I just got news. Outside, the sun has risen. So, that's a recycled joke of Jim's. But tonight, we're going to keep things on, on point. So welcome, everyone, to the 2014 Chamber of Commerce Awards Banquet. Um, it's my great honor to be the Chamber Board President of 2014. Last year and a bit of the year before were transitional periods for the Chamber. We, uh, for more than 30 years, have shared a director with FIDA, and in 2012, that relationship dissolved, and so we've had to really reform the Chamber as a standalone, independent organization. But now we're moving forward, and uh, we're working to fulfill our main goal. Our main goal is assuring the value that our members put into us exceeds the investment. And so we want the the value that you get from your chamber membership to exceed your investment in every way possible. So in that, in line with that, we did a, um, a, main, a member survey this spring. It's the first one we've done since 2010. We asked all sorts of questions to find out what is it that you need from the chamber. Uh, to turn around a phrase, famous line, JFK, it isn't ask what your chamber can do for you, but or what you can do for your chamber, but what can your chamber do for you? And it starts with asking that question of us. So we do need to hear from you as much as possible. If you have needs and concerns, please call our office, contact our board, let us know what you need, because we're here for you. We want to make you feel that your membership is very valuable. An exciting new program we have this year is Leadership Fairfield. We're working at uh, Ashley Moore from Indian Hills Community College, putting this program together. We hope to start this September. There's a flyer on the table about it. It's a seven course community awareness program. It's gonna meet once a day for seven months. And it's basically highlighting the common thread of everything that's happening here in Fairfield, which is effective leadership. So each day will have its own theme, uh, including business entrepreneurship, local government, public safety, education, and quality of life. Uh, so the participants will also complete a community project to put their leadership in action. So if you want to find out more about that, check out those flyers or contact the chamber. We have a couple of awards tonight. Unfortunately, neither of the recipients are here, but uh, we will give the awards anyway. The first is the 2013 Past President Award and Distinguished Service Award. This is sponsored by KMCD. The recipient of this award was the 2013 Chamber Board President, Sean List. Sean guided the Chamber through the transitional period I mentioned earlier. He was a real rock. He was very solid, always calm, always steady. In 2013, the Chamber updated, updated our bylaws, which was quite a process, and created a new strategic plan. In the strategic plan, we simplified our mission. Our vision, simply, to lead our business community to greater success. Couldn't have put it any more simply. And our mission statement, connect our members, engage our community, prosper together. And Sean also took on rather big task of simplifying and making our due structure more equitable. So in the past, the dues that our members paid 
Uh, it was rather complicated to explain. We simplified that, and as a result, in 2014, we're seeing an increase in membership. So thank you, Sean. Uh, not here tonight, but we'll make sure he gets his awards. So let's have a round of applause for Sean. Next time. I'd like to take this time to recognize all the past presidents of the Chamber Board. When I say your name, could you please stand, and when we're done, we will applaud. Sarah Cochran, 1996. Judith Cox, 1992. Pat Doyle, 1995. Tammy Dunbar, 2009. Jane Ann Harrell, 2010. Jody Kerr, 2001. Jim Pedrick, 2002. Dick Smith, 1990. Tom Thompson, 1982. Thank you very much for your service. We have another Distinguished Service Award. These awards are for chamber board members who gave it their all, who served two consecutive three-year terms. They have six years of volunteering to the chamber board. Uh, so Sean received that award as well. And this one goes to Terry Baker, who also couldn't be here tonight. Terry served on the chamber board from 2008 to 2013. And she also helped guide the chamber through a transitional period in 2012 as our um, board president. And she also was responsible for the hiring of our new director, Nancy Morrissey. That was quite a process, but it was great results. So thank you very much, Terry Baker. A round of applause for Terry. Now I'd like to recognize our current board members. When I say your name, please stand and we'll give a round of applause. Uh, Sue Gale, Josie Hannes, Aaron Kness, our treasurer, Seth Miller, John Olson, <coughs> Ken Ross, Joan Allen, Laura Atwood, Don Bechtel, Janine Parker, Stephen Pedrick, Chad Romer, Darian Slope, and Zach Sobeck. Official members, non-voting members who are, uh, represent other organizations are Scott Harriet from MUM, Corey Larson from the Fairfield Mac Manufacturers Association, Preston Lippicott from the Fairfield Arts Convention Center, Ed Malloy, Mayor of Fairfield, Adam Plaguey, Vita, and Dick Reed from the Supervisors. Thank you very much, ex officios. Now I'll give the mic back to Pedro for our, our next act. Tighten that up, speaker. Now it's time to heat the place up again with Tropicante. You may be familiar with some of these guys. They've performed in a larger form on the square a couple of times as Orquesta Alta Maiz. So please welcome back to Fairfield, Tropicante.
Michael, you're supposed to bet for two. Yeah. And Janine, where's Janine? Oh, she's coming. Okay, well, Josie. Okay. Now, uh, Michael really, really wanted to have a pinata tonight, but the problem is our chamber executive's husband is an attorney, and they just spoil everything. But I've, I've determined, I figured out a way to avoid liability here. So, uh, Michael, you hold this. And, uh, no, give me the big stick. Ed, Ed, the big stick. Okay, now, uh, I think you better put the mic blindfold on him. Okay, now spin around about ten times, Ed. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough. Okay. Are you ready, Michael? Not really. Probably better turn your head, too. Should have gotten a Cardinals bat instead of a Cubs bat. Sponsored by Shaus Voorhees. They're not able to be with us this evening, but uh, we're uh, presenting them for them and very, very pleased that they're doing that. <coughs> the first Business Improvement Award goes to Caribou Coffee at High B. Virgil Simmons and Chad Romer are here to receive this award. presence in Fairfield for 64 years. I can't even believe that. They've contributed so much over the years to so many organizations and their latest contribution has been the Caribou Coffee and um, let me see, what else you call it? And Hy-Vee Gas. So they've added for us gourmet pastries and sandwiches. They have all sorts of delicacies there. You can get everything you need. Uh, like you would at any kind of a C store. And uh, wonderful coffee. It's brewed fresh every hour. Iced coffees are available there. And they gave me some statistics that are pretty impressive. Somebody did. That uh, since January of this year, they've given over $354,000 in fuel discounts. They're working at providing the cheapest gas in the area. Thank you. Our next award goes to Fairfield True Value, and Zach and Jen Sobeck are going to be uh, receiving this award. Fairfield True Value has remodeled a vacant building, 30,000 square feet of it. They've brought in many, many new products and services. They have added 15 to 20 new jobs. They have everything from appliances to paint, rentals, tools, engine repair, furniture, mattresses, plumbing, electrical, and anything you need for your garden and yard. We thank this nice young couple and they have family with them tonight for helping us out in our community with another wonderful business.
Our third award goes to H and H Mold and Tooling, and Clayton Herman is with us tonight to receive this award. This past year, H and H Molding expanded its production facility here with an 8,000 square foot addition. They added, uh, they used many, many local contractors to be able to provide this building, and they added a new high-speed six-axis FPT Ronin milling machine. I know. <laughs> Did you like that? You know, I'm going to stand here and act like I know what that is. Well, I don't, but maybe Clayton can help us out. Anyway, it has two milling heads. It has a, a five-axis positioning 50 taper head and high-speed continuous 18,000 RPM five-axis HSK 63 tapers. And we're not sure, but we think it can be used on ambulances, too. We thank you so much for doing this for our community and adding this wonderful, wonderful service that then goes on to other industries. The next award goes to Holt Family Dental Care and Matthew Holt, I think, is with us tonight to receive this award. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay, very good. Holt Family Dental Care has been in our community since 1987. They do lots and lots of things in the community. They visit the schools to help children learn about good oral hygiene. They give back to our community in lots and lots of different ways. Um, they recently have done a major remodel of their facility. They've added a lot of things like digital x-ray into oral cameras computer monitors, and it goes on and on. Uh, Doctors Teresa and Michael Holt, welcome. Dr. Matthew Holt to their practice so that they can continue to provide Fairfield in our area with a, a good option in oral hygiene and care. Thank you. The next award goes to Isla's. And Sharon uh, Stenigle is going to be receiving that award tonight. Is she here with us? Okay, great, that's great. So, Isla's has a mission to make a very comfortable family place. They took the old pool hall, they dusted it off, refurbished it, pulled out the old pool sticks and balls and put them back where they had been many, many years ago and where some of you might remember during the growing up years and have made a wonderful addition to the restaurants available in our community. They added many new things, but one special thing that they're doing is they have started using many locally grown products, many organic products. They're part of Buy Fresh, Buy Local. They are using local beers and wines, and they're giving back to the community every day. Thank you so much. award is a really special one to me. It goes to Jefferson County Health Center and receiving the award tonight is Deb Carden, CEO and Renee Revling, who is our Board of Trustees President or Chairperson. Jefferson County Health Center in our attempt to uh, give back to and take care of the communities we serve, I should say, added a 13,000 square foot clinic addition. In that clinic addition, we have more space for physicians. Part of our mission is to recruit and bring physicians, family practice, and specialists here so that all of you can get care if you need it. In that area, we have two neurologists who move their entire practices from Ottumwa, Iowa, to Fairfield. We have a full, care, full service eye care uh, in American eye care there and also Dr. Jonathan Cutler, ophthalmologist, works with them. We have a full service retail pharmacy there, New Cara Pharmacy, Elisa Space in that building, and we're very, very pleased to be able to bring all of those things to our community. Thank you very much. The 
next award goes to Sweet and Saucy. Is that no? Yes, yeah, Sweet and Saucy. Do that one first. And receiving that award is Norma and Tony Baker. Are they here with us? Good. Very good. So Sweet and Saucy is one of those wonderful places where you can get barbecue here in town. And isn't it great that we have that opportunity? I think you started in June of 2013, is that right? And they feature real wood fire barbecue. Loose meat sandwiches, great tenderloins, mouth-watering sides, and delectable desserts. They use locally harvested hardwoods in their smokers to create that great barbecue. So if you uh, want great barbecue, they say look for the wood pile. Thank you so much. The next business is the Sweet Spot. And Joe Freeman is here to accept that award. The Sweet Spot started out as an ice cream store, but has now become an ice cream store and a restaurant. They, this business does lots in the community. They help support the Fairfield Marching Band and Fairfield Little League. They've added a room for uh, that will seat 50 people inside. They've added two bathrooms, one that's handicap accessible, some new concrete for outdoor seating, decorative fencing, and they've made a good place for people to go for that wonderful American treat ice cream. A good place for people to take their children, for Sunnybrook to take residents. We thank you for doing this for the community. last of our Business Improvement Awards. Thank you to all of you. All right, so now we're going to play a little video. So we had this idea that we needed to get some community involvement. So Jason Strong and I went around on Monday and maybe three people knew about it, but the majority of people, we were literally Hey, what are you doing? Are you at work? We're going to be there in five minutes. We're going to do a dance video. What do you think? And people were freaked out. Uh, uh, how about tomorrow? Like, my hair is a good day. And I said, it doesn't matter. You're going to wear sombreros. We've got vests. And so every single place we went to, they did amazing. It, it was just awesome. So the popular song, Happy, is what we've got going. You want to see this start? It might seem crazy what I'm about to say.
I don't know how she does it. She talks people into doing these things. We all go along with it. All right, uh, we have some more awards to give out. Several more. Let's get it started here. Uh, first award is Community Improvement Award, sponsored by Foss, Kaiken, and Cochrane. Presented tonight by Sarah Cochran, accepted by Todd Bechtel of Vintage Power Wagons. Vintage Power Wagons is the largest dealer in the world of 1940 to 1971 Dodge four-wheel drive trucks and parts. They also hold the annual International Dodge Power Wagon Rally in the second full weekend in June. Last year, they purchased the former DOT property on 9th Street, made several upgrades, including installing a new roof on the building, put up a new fence, new lifts in the shop, and cleaning up yard debris. So thank you very much. This is Power Wagon. Next, we have the Green Business Award, sponsored by Global ID Group. This award is presented by Ken Ross and accepted by Joy and Aaron Hirschberg of Green Building Supply. Joel and Joy Hirschberg have owned Green Building Supply since 1991 and have been chamber members for the last seven years. They've made it their purpose to provide safe and reliable building products, helping lo locals create healthy homes and a better quality of life. The first customers were their friends and fair for the community. But as they grew locally and nationally, it became clear that they needed a larger space to showcase their products. The new location downtown allowed them to incorporate their own green building products, design and construction practices, while bringing back to life an unused 1930s building. The list of improvements include LED lighting, non-toxic paints and finishes, sustainably harvested flooring, energy efficiency, energy efficient windows, and the reuse of old building materials from on-site demolition. They've always been honored to be part of the community that's very progressive in the view of sustainable building and the necessity for non-toxic building materials. Thank you very much. Join us. Next is the Impact Award, sponsored by Fairfield Economic Development Association. The award is presented by FIDA Director Adam Flakey and accepted by Karen Haring and Kella, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Chop. Chop. Perfect. From Fairfield Art Association. The Fairfield Art Association was formed in the spring of 1966 to foster art in Fairfield and the surrounding community. It is a nonprofit organization supported by membership and volunteers. Originally housed in the Carnegie Library, they now have their studio here in the Fairfield Arts Convention Center and maintain several galleries, gallery areas within the facility, including main ex ex exhibit area, permanent collection displays, and artist sales gallery. FAA has commissioned three major pieces for the community. The uh, William Coop Bronze Statue in Central Park, the Leapfrog Statue, the old Carnegie Library, the Leaper there is my cousin Megan, and the mural at the indoor pool. They provide weekly art classes for adults and children, an annual garden tour, art scholarships, summer art installations downtown, exhibit receptions, and partner regularly with other organizations like the Chamber of Commerce, schools, trails, art walk, airport, and the Media Center, Beautification Commission, Library, Health Center, and many others. Thank you very much. Some good dancing on all right, next is the Interactive Media Award. This is sponsored by Hawthorne Direct. The award goes to Fairfield Media Center. The award is presented by Tammy and Dan Scholl and accepted by Francesca Horline. Fairfield Media Center, FMC, FMC Studios, FairfieldMediaCenter.com, and Fairfield Public Access, Access Television are provided by the City of Fairfield as resources for community members to express their creativity and opinions in a legal, non-commercial video format. FMC also provides opportunities for citizens to make, us, to make use of current technology to exchange information, ideas, and artistry through the video medium. FMC promotes media literacy through training in video production, editing, and critical viewing. FMC makes video equipment available through a partnership with the Fairfield Public Library and has edi editing facilities, a video recording studio, and knowledgeable staff available at FMC stu Studios located at 123 North Main. Uh, we have a short video we're going to play tonight. Everyone loves a good story. Every place has its own story. 
What's your story? People want to know. Your friends want to know. The world wants to know. The 10,000 stories of Fairfield want to be told. And we're here to help. Welcome to the Fairfield Media Center. A free public access facility dedicated to helping you create and share your films and videos with state-of-the-art equipment and facilities for use by the community, a public access educational center featuring classes on media equipment and software, two local cable access channels as outlets for your films, as well as a page on the World Wide Web. We have everything you need to help you get your voice heard and tell your unique story, from your very first film to your latest masterpiece, Fairfield Media Center. Come see, us Come see us today. Thank you, FMC. Thank you for joining tonight. And Next is the New Young Business Award, sponsored by Sunnybrook. Uh, the recipient tonight is the Burning Oak Restaurant and Bar. The award is presented by Betty Howe and accepted by Savannah Rezer. The Burning Oak has been a chamber member for one year and hopes to grow within the chamber and community. Burning Oak presents a beautiful atmosphere for coworkers, friends, and family to share intimate evenings as well as large parties. They have unique menu items that are featured on a seasonal menu, which includes local and grass-fed <coughs> proteins, vegetarian, and some health-focused options. The Burning Oak also has a full bar, which provides excellent beer choices and fine wine. They hope as, the, as they expand within, they also expand into a place in the Fairfield community members to enjoy and express themselves. It will soon be adding evening entertainment, and a lounge featuring, featuring local art and musicians. Thank you very much, Bernie Hope. <laughs> Next award is the Progress Award. It's is sponsored by French Renneker and Associates. Recipient is Orpheum Theater. Uh, Christian Day from the Orpheum could not be here to accept the award. Modern America Cinema has been producing and distributing films such as Capone's Whiskey, The Story of Templeton Rye for over five years, primarily in the Midwest region. In May of 2013, MAC signed a lease on what would become their exhibit, exhibition, exhibition house here in Fairfield. The Orpheum Theater, formerly the Coed, opened its doors on October 1st, 2013. The entire lobby has been remodeled into an Art Deco style decor designed by Fairfield resident Tina Johnson and the North Auditorium has been upgraded to digital projection, Dolby 5.1 surround sound, and all seats were replaced with high quality theater chairs. The stage was also built to accommodate live performances. Since opening, the Orpheum has provided a wide range of films and live stage performances, as well as offering selections of social events in the lobby cafe, including teen trivia, Wednesday night smooth jazz, and an art gallery. Plans are currently underway to renovate the South Auditorium. Thank you, Orpheum Theater. <laughs> Next, we have the Rising Star Award, sponsored by Danner Oil Company. This award is going to Sunnybrook Living Care. The award will be presented by me, accepted by Michelle Hansen and Betty Howe. Betty Howe had a vision in the wake of the community's decision to build a new Jefferson County Hospital, purchase the former building, maintain the home of its 36 long tear long-term care residents, and expand on making a home to an ever-growing population of elderly in Jefferson County and the surrounding communities. Betty's never-ended passion for the elderly and a desire for them to receive care in a home-like setting has come to fruition with the completion of Walton and Bonnyfield Suites, the former med surge and physical therapy departments. Since its inception in April 2008, Sunnybrook Living Care has been a staunch supporter of the chamber and its involvement within the community. Sunny Book has been a proud sponsor of Art Walk to share the talents of so many people in and around Fairfield. Sunny Book's involvement in the community has been a labor of love for the elderly in our community. They employ over 170 people in and around Fairfield. They deliver meals and treats to at-home elderly who are frail or alone in holidays and special occasions. They organize garage and bake sales to support the Alzheimer's Association. They were recognized for second place in the Relay for Life donations, sponsored blood, blood drives, and they house the Helping Hand Loan Closet located in the lo lower level. This month, a new beauty shop, the Beehive, and Sunnybrook, Sunnybrook's Sweet Street 
a quaint little place for a sweet treat, we're both open to the community. Thank you very much. Here we go. Thank you very much. talks about six-axis machines? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, this is the, the big highlight of the night now, uh, is to reveal the secret of who our citizens of the year are going to be. And I'm going to have to reverse the order that's printed in the program. I think uh, Pat Doyle got called to an emergency safety meeting. So, uh, up first... No, that's not true. Nobody ever tells me anything. Am I supposed to let him go now? <coughs> Jody has to go first, Pat. No, no, no. no All right, Nancy, you come down. I'm already here. So I'm here. Is the person receiving the award here? We'll find out in a minute. All right. <laughs> so, first of all, um, last year when I got this, I was so surprised and shocked. I forgot one really major thing. Um, I forgot to thank my wife, so thank you, him. And, and to the recipient that I give this to, remember, thank your spouse. That's important. So, so the recipient of our first Citizen of the Year Award certainly fits that description. He is indeed an outstanding citizen of our community, and he has served the community generously. He was born in a small Iowa town in the late 1950s, and grew up on an Iowa farm, doing the things that young men and farm families do. I wouldn't know, I grew up in town, so. <laughs> His chores included cleaning hog sheds, grinding feed, feeding livestock, plowing, disking, planting, cultivating, walking beans, baling hay, and harvesting. He enjoyed traveling with his family, reading, swimming and caring for his pets, gerbils, fish, and dogs. In high school, he participated in band, choir, speech team, drama club, and track, and also 4-H. Sounds pretty typical for a good Iowa kid, right? After graduating from high school in 1976, he enrolled in a small liberal, liberal arts college in Central Iowa. While he was a student there, he enjoyed study trips abroad and membership in a fraternity. He volunteered as chairman for the dance a -thon to raise money for muscular dystrophy. In 1980, he earned his bachelor's degree in education and then began a career in teaching. Still sounds pretty typical for an intelligent, motivated young Iowa guy, right? Once again, I wouldn't know, but... <laughs> but this young man is anything but typical. His career progressed, and in 1984, he was hired to teach at the high school in a certain southeast island. <coughs> that small city welcomed his arrival, but the citizens had no idea just how blessed they would be. His life exemplifies what he believes. To be a part of the community, you must be involved with the community, either in a seen or an unseen way. That young man quickly joined the local church and began developing a very active program for the youth. He gave generously of his time and his energies, leading fellowship activities, taking groups to camps, and even on vacations to one of his favorite places on earth. One of those fortunate, now adults, remembers his devotion fondly with these words. What I remember most was his ability to engage with the youth in the youth group. He strived to make the activities something that all kids would want to attend, so there were opportunities to build relationships. He made efforts to connect with the youth and showed genuine interest and care for what was going on in their lives. That interest and care has followed those kids into their adult lives. 
Before long, he was joined here by a charming young wife, and they went about building a family and a home. Through the years, he's continued to be very active in his church, as a member of the church's leadership, serving on the Christian Education Committee, and teaching Sunday school, and organizing activities for the Wednesday night youth group. He prefers to work in those backstage tasks for his church, volunteering for various jobs and duties for the sake of helping out for a worthy cause and a mission and a purpose. In addition to working full-time as a teacher, he served the Park and Recreation Department as a lifeguard, as well as training and certifying many other lifeguards and swimming instructors for our community. His teaching career has been very successful. He completed a master's degree in 1990 and now serves as chairman of the English and Language Arts Department. He works tirelessly to ensure a quality learning environment and experience for all the students of our district. He's exacting and sets high standards for his students. His efforts are recognized and appreciated. He was named Fairfield's Teacher of the Year in 1997, and in 2008, he earned National Board Teaching Certification, once again setting very high examples for his students. At last count, he's been directly or indirectly involved in the education and development of at least 5,000 members of our community, including some of us, our children, and possibly by now a few grandchildren. But it's his expertise at another of his teaching responsibilities that provides the bridge from professional excellence to community service. He's the director of the Fairfield High School Drama Department. During his career, he's directed countless extremely successful high school plays and musicals, giving his students skills for a lifetime of involvement. He's been known to spend countless hours cleaning and organizing the high school theater's infamous dungeon. And if none of you have ever been there, it is a dungeon. Um, he's amassed a collection of costumes and props likely unrivaled in eastern Iowa and beyond. He's very willing to go into the dungeon to provide creative costuming for any community member who has a need for one. He has also used his drama productions to raise money and awareness for different community and national worthy causes. From the beginning of his career in Fairfield, he shared his love of theater with all of us. Early on, he offered summer drama workshops for elementary age students. And then, 26 years ago, he began a relationship with the Fairfield Area Community Theater. And our community has been so much better for it. This is where he gets front stage building. He facilitates, coordinates, and directs community members to produce dramatic shows or a full-scale musical. And he does so expertly, skillfully, tactfully, and patiently. And with a fantastic sense of humor also. He knows exactly which actor to put into what mold to create a great cast and how to put together a great crew to create a great production. His passion and his motivation are best expressed in his own words. I like doing this because I can get, create a venue for those community members who want to be in a show to have a fun and unique theater experience. Many of those in our shows have never been in a production. So through hard work and lots of fun, our community theater group has produced nearly 50 shows since its revival 25 years ago. And I've directed all but five of those shows. We've had casts as large as 150 to those with less than 10. But because we produce peer and true community theater, we are supported by the community itself. It has been said that those who can do and those who cannot teach. Our honoree proves that there is indeed a third category for a very select few, which is those who can and do do it all. He leads by example. He focuses on the positive. He moves to action when others only talk. He's a true gentleman and maintains a level of civility that's rarely been unseated. So much more could be said, but perhaps most important, he's been married to Trisha for 26 years, is a father of four great kids, and we're so very grateful that he chose this community as his home. I'm pleased to introduce a truly outstanding citizen, Scott Slecta.
Thank you, Trisha. I remember. <laughs> Number two, since you're all here tonight, I'll see you tomorrow or Sunday afternoon at the high school. Number three, as a character in the play that I should be at, but this is okay, says in the first act, holy crap. <laughs> This is totally unexpected. I am very humbled by this. Um, I do what I do because I'm a part of Fairfields for the last, since 1984. So I do appreciate those people who have always supported me, who have always been a part of my life since I've come here, um, who've always supported uh, what I've done, the programs that I've done, supported my wife, my family, my friends. And, um, I am humbled by this. I, this was totally unexpected. Darian kidnapped me away from the production. My big concern is who's going to ring the chimes at intermission? <laughs> but here I am, and so I do appreciate everything you've done, and I do. Um, I am very honored by this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Scott, for the costume, too. I really appreciate this. The best thing I liked about that introduction was when Pat described someone born in 1959 as being a young man. I really, I really like the sound of that. Okay, now, Jody, I guess we're going to let you have, have the microphone. Okay, it would be a little dim up here, so I have to put these on. Good evening, everyone. Our second citizen of the year. We, the residents of Fairfield and Jefferson County, are fortunate. We are fortunate that there are people in our community, like one of the recipients of this year's Citizen of the Year Award. Not only does this award recipient make our local community a better place to live, but this recipient makes this world a better place. This year's recipient's life was spent mostly in Fairfield. It included stints in college elsewhere, but this recipient returned home, and boy, are we lucky. Reports are that as a child, this person was kind and generous, except perhaps when it came to the recipient's brother. Rumor has it that this recipient was able to convince this brother to always be the first to pull the recipient in the wagon with promises that the favor would be returned, but it rarely was. It is also reported that the recipient and that same brother were industrious and honed their marketing skills by scouring the neighborhood, selling rocks to neighbors. <laughs> Finding money for worthy causes is a skill that this recipient has perfected, and those rock-selling adventures were just the beginning. This recipient is a consummate organizer, Perhaps organizing backyard neighborhood services provided the seeds to a lifetime of recognizing needs and meeting them. And again, boy, are we lucky that this person is organizing and meeting needs in our community. This recipient has a personal mission to help people. Now many of us may have the general desire to help people in need, but this person goes above and beyond that simple desire. This recipient recognized that so many high school students did not receive any gifts at Christmas time. Perhaps their family struggled just to put food on the table, or perhaps that child had been effectively abandoned by their parents. This recipient organized a nonprofit group to provide a simple gift or two to these kids. But perhaps more importantly, she understood that what may mean more to them than the school sweatshirt they received is the acknowledgement that someone was thinking of them at Christmas, that they matter to someone. The name of this organization is the African Violet Foundation, or ABF, and it was based upon the premise that a simple act of kindness can charge a change a life. This recipient is the heart and soul of the African Violet, Violet Foundation, which was named in honor of her grandmother, who always delivered an African Violet to a person who needed to know that someone was thinking of them. This recipient organizes, fundraises, purchases, wraps, distributes, 
and provides thank you notes for the Christmas time gifts to needy high school and middle school students at Fairfield and Pekin schools. This endeavor has community-wide support and has grown tremendously in the few years it has been in existence. This past year, the African Violet Foundation provided Christmas time gifts to 337 students. Amazing. Her giving heart doesn't stop with ABF. No, she is always finding and fulfilling needs in our community, never asking for anything in return, and sometimes at great sacrifice to herself, although that would probably never be admitted. She organizes clothing drives and collects unwanted furniture and other household items to distribute to people in need. Last year, she spearheaded a Show You Care with Underwear campaign to collect new underwear to distribute. This recipient's life requires great organizational skills and great creative skills as well. As a parent of four children, lots of organization is necessary. Not only parenting four children, but also parenting countless other children, and sometimes even their parents, who cross paths with her. As a teacher of special learners in the special education classroom, she has also led and coordinated the school's Renaissance program. This program has two large assemblies each year at which students are honored for character, grade point improvement, attendance, and academic, academic achievement. She also makes PE clothes available to, in her classroom for students who need them, and this effort grew into a charitable endeavor called Caring Through Clothing, where clothing is given away the weekend after Thanksgiving, the best Black Friday deal there is, as she describes it. This recipient has been described as never missing an opportunity to help people in need, and when she sees a way to help, she pursues it. Last year, she and the school nurse led a Be The Match donor drive, seeking a bone marrow donor match for a Fairfield High School senior facing a type of leukemia. They secured volunteers and put in hours planning and working with the hospital staff to have DNA collection at the health center and high school. This recipient also is a school to work coordinator and has the work experience coordinator duties, helping both general education and special education students obtain valuable work experience. Another goal of hers was to raise funds to purchase a new washer and dryer for a single parent. While that may seem like a strange goal to some of you, she knew the importance of having access to clean clothing for a struggling family. This goal, too, was accomplished in a very short period of time. I guess if she could sell rocks to the neighbors, raising money for a washer and dryer was probably a piece of cake. One of her supporters stated, most of us can look at our community and see, and see the needs of many, but not too many of us actually decide to be the person to take on the responsibility to help. She believes that one person can make a difference and that a little bit of kindness goes a long way. This recipient is a very creative and humorous person. Most likely, we have all had the opportunity to read a column in the Fairfield Ledger written by her and laughed aloud at the family antics described in such detail that you could almost swear you witnessed it in person. This recipient has also been published in Chicken Soup for the Soul and has written a book, yet unpublished. I also have it on good authority that if you had ever been lucky enough to receive one of her holiday letters, you would remember laughing through the tears while reading it. It may be hard to believe that a single person could help so many people and do it with enthusiasm and laughter. And once again, aren't we fortunate that this person is in our community doing so many good things for people that are, unfortunately, sometimes invisible to the rest of us. This year's recipient is here because she was told that the African Violet Foundation was receiving an award tonight. We apologize to you for lying about that. But we knew that you would not think yourself deserving of this award because that is your nature. But you are very deserving. It is my pleasure to introduce to you 2014 Citizen of the Year, Stacy Ann Wilson Wright.
hope the paper's here, because I'm speechless, and this might not happen again. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. <laughs> I was told to come up here and put in a shameless plug for donations to the African Violet Foundation. <laughs> so I'm having to rethink my speech. Thank you, and um, I guess I would quote Martin Luther King Jr. who said, life's most urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Um, my daughter told me that she needed to use the restroom, and now I see there's a conspiracy in the back. So I'd like to thank my family, my mom and dad, Margaret and David Wilson, my kids, Addie. Jasper's not here because he is engaged in the most honorable form of service. He's at basic training at Fort Leonard Wood right now. So thank you to him and our military. And... Thank you to Sarah Cochran, who lied to me. <laughs> and I still want to put in that shameless plug, so I'll just say life's second urgent question is, how large of a check will you write my organization at the end of this evening? <laughs> Thank you. I have one thing in common with the last recipient, too. I also have an unpublished book. Of course, it's unwritten, too. But congratulations to both uh, Citizens of the Year. Uh, congratulations to all of the award winners. Congratulations, Fairfield. This is always a great, uh, great occasion to be reminded of all the good things that are going on in our community. And so, in closing, I would like to quote that. Whose speech is this? Scott Selectman. I would like to quote that other great linguist, my grandfather, Pedrick. Bonjour, bandido, comment allez-vous? Adios.